Hey there, Lickin' Riffers! Welcome back to yet another awesome guitar lesson here on Lickin' Riff, in which I would like to share with you another one of my methods for creating unique and beautiful chords, sometimes outlandish weird chords. Okay, it starts from okay, melodic chords, like these ones, and it can end up with weird chords, which are still melodic, and it can end up with Just okay, and um, there's a method to this madness, and I would like to unlock it for you. We're gonna go step by step, but before we start, I would like to remind you that DistroKid are back with another exclusive offer, especially for us Lickin' Riffers. Okay, if you don't remember, DistroKid already promoted their service. They enable us to, they developed a platform that enables us to distribute your music. Okay, I don't currently record music, but you can distribute your music via DistroKid to all available platforms. And by all, I do mean all available platforms. Spotify, um, Apple Music, everything. All platforms with one click, very easy to use platform. And they already offered us 50% uh, off of their service using the link below in the description. So that still applies, okay? You can still get your own DistroKid account for half of practically nothing, okay? Um, and this time they're back to inform you that they now support collaborations because nowadays we can collaborate with musicians from all over the world. So when we need to divide the earnings, things become quite headacheful, okay? Headache inducing. So uh, they eliminated the headache out of the process. You can control all the data, you can control all the earnings and how the earnings are uh, distributed and divided between musicians uh, that you work with. And if those musicians don't have DistroKid accounts, they can join. Or if they decline to join, you can uh, take their cut and divide it between other musicians or you can keep it to yourself. Um, and you have all the data. Okay, the other musicians uh, don't have access to your data. They only see their percentage. So you control your music, your earnings, everything. And it's an easy to use platform used by top industry producers and musicians. So uh, you can access it too for half the price, which starts basically from nothing, so it's half of nothing. So click the link below in the description, join DistroKid and start distributing your beautiful music everywhere. Okay, so thank you very much DistroKid. Okay, so how do I create these chords? <clears throat> now, what I started with, okay, with these particular chords that I showed you was this. I started with A minor seven. <laughs> Now, A minor seven is a bar on five with the open fifth string. So it's five, 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 and zero. Okay, if you look at it from a tab standpoint. Now, if we add the ninth to it, we have A minor nine with seven on the first string. So it's seven, five, 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 and the open fifth string. Okay, also used in, okay, in harmonics. Well, okay, so A minor nine, that was my starting point. So I tried adding the Dorian note, okay, right here. So I had seven, seven, five, five, and the open fifth string. Okay, now this note gave me a nice jazzy chord. It's the major sixth, okay? If you have A and you add F sharp to it, okay? But if you add it to a minor chord, okay, you get A minor with F sharp, okay? So um, right here, it sounds like this. It 
it's full of fourth intervals, okay? We have a fourth here, we have a fourth here, but we have the tritone here. So we have that jazzy dominant sound, even though it's a minor chord. So that was my starting point. Okay, now, that was my starting point. Now, I thought, okay, this is a minor. What happens if I add the third here on the bass? What happens if I add C as the bass note? Then this becomes a sort of a C chord with a Lydian sound. So this is this. So it's double bar, right? It's a double bar with three on the fifth string, a bar on five, okay, for strings three and four, and a little bar with your little finger, okay, on strings one and two on seven. So it's seven, seven, five, five, three. This is a beautiful chord in and of itself. Okay, so you, you can take it anywhere you want. So already we have two really, really nice chords. So then I thought, Okay. Wouldn't it be easier to just take the C bass here, okay, on eight on the bass? So if we have seven, seven on strings one and two, and we have eight on the bass, we get a little bit of that same sound. So now we have to search for this. Now, okay, you have 10 on the D string. So if we do this, Okay, seven seven on one and two with ten on the D string. We get a nice uh, seventh chord sound, but when we add the bass, we have a slightly weird chord, but it's kind of the same sound as this. It's just weird to put on. So, um, in order to farther weirdify it, I decided to close the loop and add seven on the third string. Thus giving it a slightly minor sound. Although, if you look at it, you have the, mi the, the major seven here. Okay, you have the major seven, so okay, it's it's a major seven sound, okay? You have the, you have the flat five, you have the major seven, okay? So, now, what gives this chord its particular sound is actually not, it's, it's none of these notes. It's the 10 on the D string. Why? Because of this. Okay? That second interval. Okay? You have a minor second, you have a major second, okay? So this major second interval actually colors this chord. Okay, so and when you when you play like this, okay, or just strum it you get this dissonance. Pretty nice chord, right? Now we started from this. Okay? Pretty standard jazzy chord. And we ended up with this chord. So the next logical step would be to try and impose okay, the ninth okay, that I started with Okay, into this shape as well. So I added the, the nine, it's actually a nine now on the first string. Now it's not technically a nine. What, what, what I meant actually was the ninth shape, okay? The ninth chord shape that I started with, okay? Don't confuse it with the actual ninth sound. If you only do nine, seven, 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 well, then it's B minor nine, but we're on C. Remember, we're on C. 
So this is not the ninth. This is actually the flat nine. So. Okay? Now that I added it, it became a really nice complex chord. But now it's too crowded in my opinion. It's a little bit... There's way, way, way too much going on here. Way too much. So what I decided to do was to forego one string, just to not pick it. So uh, if we have this chord on, okay, I just don't pick the third string. Okay, so... But then something is still missing. It became from overcrowded to disconnected. That didn't sound right. It didn't sound right. So what I decided to try was to open the third string and try it again. Okay, so I opened the third string. Okay, and this is okay, it's inside the C chord. Okay, okay, it's it's G. It's a G note. So now we have two notes from the actual chord. The 10 here on the D string is actually... The dog is running in his sleep. Um, okay, so um, the, the 10 here is the octave. Okay, so we have two C notes, G. And now we have the flat 5 and the flat 9. So let's see what this sounds like. And this is just right. It's the right balance between weird and melodic. And if you arpeggiate it randomly, you get melodies. So there you have it. Um, another method for creating a step-by-step -step weird chord. Grab your DiscoKid discount in the description, your own Lick and Riff link. Thank you very much, DiscoKid. Thank you for watching this video. Go have fun, build your own chords. Let me know how it goes and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now. Have fun.